host, Polly Jo LeBay, here for an evening of healing and divine meditation. Um, how are you guys doing? Um, here we are the on Thanksgiving Eve, and um, we're about to embark on the holiday season. Um, and maybe you need a little guidance on how to maneuver the next few days with family and friends, or maybe you just want to know how your energy is going to make it through <laughs> the holiday season, because um, it can be a little bit challenging sometimes for for all of us. So. You know, if, if you would like a little guidance, um, I will be pulling cards after the meditation. And the cards for tonight are the lovely um, Art of Love Tarot deck. And I love this deck because it's Denise Jarvie with Tony Carmen Salerno. It has some very nice divine feminine energy. But um, what better energy to call in than um, love, joy, and happiness um, for the holiday season? Couldn't we all use a little more of that? So um, that's the deck that wanted to be used tonight. So I'm looking forward to doing that for you. Um, you know, the cool thing here at Star Nations is we're a community of um, healers and spiritual teachers. And we all have our own unique way of um, sending healing and helping people move forward um, on their spiritual journey. So make sure, you know, that you check out all of the different wonderful shows because I'm the third show today. So did you happen to see the spiritual roundtable with um, Neshi Lokots or Nature Adventures with Minnie and, and Neshi? You know, if you missed them, don't worry. You can check it out simply by going to the Star Nations page and both shows will be there. Um, and that's the really neat thing is that, you know, sometimes one show has the message for us versus a different show and it has a different piece um, and it's a way for us to kind of get a good um, gathering of information and it's always fun to learn something new at least that's how i think about it and we're all taking a break tomorrow because it's thanksgiving so you know we can spend it with our family and hopefully you can spend it with yours um, but remember there's always the replays if you need a little boosting just don't worry about checking in. You can always connect to one of the replays and um, get yourself a little more grounded. <laughs> Send yourself a little healing if you need it because, you know, it can be a little tough maneuvering. Um, but we're here to help and support you in all the ways that we know how, which is really cool. Um, and I'm excited to have Neshi Lokots in the driver's seat. She's my producer this evening. So thank you, Neshi, for being there for me and helping us gather um, those of you who are here to receive readings and healings um, this evening. Um, what else is up that's new? Hmm. Let's see. So I will be back next week um, on Tuesday for Chakra Sessions. Um, that's my Tuesday afternoon show at noon. Um, and... I still don't know. My team hasn't told me what the next show is going to be about. But a lot of the um, energy has been about how to keep your heart open um, because that has been a challenge for a lot of people. And um, the holiday season is time when a lot of people have difficulty with their hearts. So um, it might be something that you want to tap into to check out. Um, and I'm excited for that grand adventure. Um, and finally, the, you know, some of you may be feeling the um, effects of the new moon. We just had it on Monday, and it's still vibrating through our energy field. Um, and when we do that new moon, you know, it's, it's a time for new beginnings. It's a time for change. It's a time to launch new ideas. So uh, you can use the momentum to get things going if you want to. So... Um, I see we have a few people I know in the house. Um, if you'd like a card drawn for you later, just make sure that you, um, hmm, I'm not having audio. Is that the message, Nitch? <laughs> All right, let me see if. Yeah, Rob, there's a few people saying that they don't have any audio. So I'm going to try a hard refresh, okay? Okay. And um, we'll see how that works. I'll okay, right thanks.
Okay, we're back. And so if we can have... Um, if you guys could let us know if we have audio, that'd be super, um, since we can hear each other. <laughs> yeah. But that's not necessarily what the feed is showing us. Yeah, I don't see any audio. All right. All right. I just switched my... Um, to my other microphone is that better hmm yeah but if you switch the the audio for the mic then you have to refresh your screen okay okay she'll be right back <laughs> we've been having some technical issues today we'll get her back up on the, in the broadcast okay do you want to say something yeah, how am I doing? I've got audio for you. Carol says she has audio. And Anne says that she can hear you just fine. So it might okay. be just it might just be um Rob. It might, might just be Rob. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We did everything we know how to do. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go back down into the lobby. <laughs> yes, back down. Bye, Neshi. <laughs> so guys, here we are, you know, and um glitches happen that's how they go um and you know we just we just roll with the punches <laughs> um but i did switch to my other mic apparently it had gone off my regular mic so hopefully that will help and i know a few of you've already asked for cards um i'm just going to remind neshi um to um redo the list in the chat room for me um so i know who wants cards after we do our meditation how's that sound <laughs> um so hey we're here we're all hit family we're gonna enjoy this evening and and the readings that are gonna happen so let's do the meditation let's get grounded let's connect and um then see what's ready to come in so let's just start by taking a nice deep breath maybe two of them we've been feeling a little anxious and i'm going to invite you to begin to ground your meditation and ground yourself so you may experience that through your root chakra or your feet but I'm going to invite you to use your heart to ground this evening. And to do that, just imagine a cord of connection going from your heart, moving through your third chakra, your second chakra, your root chakra, and all the way down through your chair, through the floor, through the foundation of the building, through the layers of earth, all the way to the molten lava center. Feeling that connection to grandmother earth and the heartbeat of the earth itself. And allowing that cord to gently expand to the size of a cylinder allowing more energy to flow, more space for you to release what's no longer serving you. And that gentle widening moving through all the chakras as well. and making space for the divine feminine energy to flow up and gather within your heart. And in the heart center, sending a cord of connection up to the divine above and doing that through our throat, through the third eye, through the crown, out through the head, and all the way up to the very center of creation where your soul was first perceived. 
And in that space, allowing a gentle expanding of your cord of connection once more to the size of a cylinder, allowing room for more flow and more connection to the divine masculine as it gathers inside your heart. And notice the divine feminine and masculine coming together in the heart in a space of unconditional love And allowing that love energy to radiate out through all of your chakras, through all the layers of your aura, in each and every direction, dimension, vibration, and frequency that you are able to connect to. And asking the divine to surround and protect us in a bubble of infinite love and infinite light. Creating a sacred space for us to do our healing work. A sacred container of healing. And welcome in your spiritual team, your angels, your guides, your master teachers, the star beings, all divine of the highest, fullest, and brightest vibration available to you in this moment now. And setting the intention that all healing work is done for the good of all and harm to none, which includes ourselves. And now gently at the crown, at the top of our head, just allowing space for even more divine energy to flow. Releasing any sense of disconnect, aloneness, or even doubt that may be blocking your energy from flowing fully. And in the third eye, in the center of the forehead, allowing energy to clear and open your perception, your connection to your intuition, your spiritual team, allowing you to see more clearly and be seen more clearly by others, opening the pathways of communication with your team so that you understand and receive messages more easily. So that you may hear and be heard when you ask for all that you need, wish, desire. And allowing space for your throat to gently open, releasing any energy that is blocking your creativity, blocking your ability to speak your authentic truth or live as your authentic self. Releasing words that you've spoken in anger, frustration, resentment, or judgment. And releasing any ways that you have held on to your words, uncertain, unable to speak your truth in particular moments, returning all the power to your voice to be open and your self-expression shared with everyone. in its fullest, most magical way. Yeah. Releasing the stress and the tension that you're holding in the back of your neck or on the top of your shoulders. Allowing those responsibilities, those burdens to gently 
release, relax, and slide off of you. And gently moving into the heart and making room for you to expand your connection with your inner child, your inner adult, your inner warrior, and your inner sage. And doing that by allowing space for more joy, more love and excitement, and curiosity to come in, fill and expand who you are. Releasing any old sadness or grief that you may be storing in there. Any ways your heart has felt wounded or hurt by others by circumstances, even by yourself. And dissolving any disappointment or shame that you may be holding there. And unburdening you from any secrets that no longer need to be kept. making room to connect with your own inner wisdom, the wisdom of each and every lifetime that you have lived, and the wisdom in connection to all of humanity. And even the divine wisdom that comes through you as inspiration Allowing space for all of that energy to flow. And moving down into your belly, into your third chakra. And releasing any old anxiety or worry that you may be carrying there. Any energy that has you stretched into the past or the future, gently calling your energy home. Releasing any cords of connection with others that are draining your energy or gently giving your power away. Releasing any anger or frustration, judgment or resentment, either in the moment or in the past that you may be carrying, or worry about that in the future. Igniting the flame within you allowing your spark to burn brightly allowing that radiant energy to flow through you and to you and even releasing any righteous anger that you may be carrying no longer serves you or pulls your energy out of the present moment, welcoming the dissolving, making space for new energy to flow through you. And moving down into the second chakra and reconnecting your energy to your flow 
flow in all aspects of your physical being, your breath, your heartbeat, your lymph, your digestive system, all ways that your body is in harmony with the fluid that we are made of. And restoring harmony to all of the ways we exchange energy with others in our relationships, in our interactions, restoring balance and peace and harmony so that we have a moment, a breath to take action rather than reaction. Releasing any toxins that we may be carrying connected to old interactions, old trauma, old relationships that we no longer need to have fueling our energy system. Sending it back to creator. And allowing the energy to move through our hips, opening, expanding our manifestation circuit to flow evenly through each side of our body so that we can create in the physical and the spiritual planes. And then gently allowing that energy to reconnect at our foundation. And in the foundation, releasing any energy of insecurity, instability. And just taking a moment to ask the divine to send healing and release anywhere in your body where you feel sore, uncomfortable. And allowing that light to move in and through and dissolve whatever is blocking your energy from flowing fully, whether it's in the pancreas or the liver, the neck or the lower back, the knees or the hips. And inviting all the released energy to flow deep within the ground, down that cylinder of connection to the divine feminine, to grandmother earth. And gently calling the divine feminine energy to come up through the cylinder to gently bring love and support and healing to all those places where we were willing to release, willing to let go in this moment. And gently allowing it to move up our spine and through our organs. Moving through our whole abdomen as well as moving up through our ribs and our lungs to our heart. Up into the throat and the neck. And also moving gently from the heart down the arms into the hands. Sending healing energy through both arms equally, as well as sending energy up the spine and out the top of the head. And allowing that energy 
to pour over you and begin to repair your aura in all its layers, any tears, cracks, holes, in each of the layer connections that we are aware of, in the physical, in the emotional, in the spiritual, through past lives and karma, in each and every direction, dimension, vibration, and frequency that we connect to. As well as each dimension And now gently reconnecting with your heart and noticing the heart expansion as the divine feminine and the divine masculine meet within you. Gather together, radiating out pulses of unconditional love. Creating space for ease and grace. And allowing the orb of connection to stay around you as long as you need it for healing. And thanking your spiritual team for being present. And also taking a moment to send healing to the earth. back to the center, to Grandmother Earth's heartbeat, healing our food, our water, our air, as well as sending healing to all who inhabit this earth plane as our home. And now take a few deep breaths and gently bring your attention, your energy, and your focus back into this moment, back into your physical body. You may want to stretch or yawn, wiggle, move, allow any space for energy flow to keep going. I'm going to grab a quick sip. All right, so I'm about to pull the divine messages. And so the card deck we're using this evening is the Art of Love Tarot. This is Denise Jarvie with the artist Tony Carmen Salerno. Um, and as most of you know, um, you know, the message, the card gives you a visual. Um, the message comes through my spiritual team. So um, sometimes... It's a little different than that. The card um, might normally appear in the tarot deck for those of you who know the tarot. Um, it has a little different flavor because of the artist and the coming together of those two people along with my spiritual team and how they perceive the energy that we're connecting to. Um, so let's get started. Um, so, oh, if you want a card, all you have to do is type in yes, please. And we will pull them in the order that we receive them. Um, it may not be in the order that you see them on your screen, um, but they're the way that we see them in the production studio. So the first card that we have is for Ellen Bartos. So Ellen, your card tonight is the Four of Trees. And the four of trees is all about growth. And a lot of the growth is coming from your heart, but it's moving out your throat. It's, it's, you're growing into being able to speak your truth. You're growing into a place of being able to be comfortable with 
saying what you need, saying what you want, and gently asking for it. It also is allowing growth to happen from those places that felt heavy or felt like grief or sorrow. Um, we all have lessons that we learn um, through interactions with others. And sometimes those can be difficult and challenging, um, but they leave space for us to stretch and learn new things. Um, and that was one of the things that's been coming through for you to sort of use your heart energy, connect to your heart energy and see where it can lead you. Um, remember to release any doubt um, because that will disconnect you from the divine and you are never alone. Um, you are always surrounded um, by loved ones um, as well as your spiritual team. So enjoy your holiday. Um, Minnie. Hmm, so Minnie, your card is the 10 of trees. So your 10 of trees is the loyalty card. Um, and the loyalty card is very connected. It's a grounded sense of connection. Um, when we are, the 10 of trees comes up, it's that very um, full connection that we have with others, you know, that sense of um, sticking together. Um, what I'm seeing is you have that loyal heart. You're very loyal to family, to friends, to your sisters. Um, and through that radiates out through you. So, so your heart is showing others that you are a calm and trustworthy person that they can rely on. Um, and that you are able to hold space for other people and really listen. Um, so that sense of loyalty, remember to, um, as you're sharing it, um, allow yourself to receive it as well. Um, sometimes we're a little more guard, we're willing to give, but we're a little guarded on the receiving. So it's inviting you to open your heart to be receiving as much loyal, um, commitment from others as you give to them. Nice holiday. All right, Rob. Ah, you have the soul card right now. The soul card is the awakening. And the awakening card is the emergence. And the emergence is your soul starting to show through, starting to peek through. You're starting to come into your own. Um, and in that place, you're you're allowing yourself to be seen more fully as who you are. And um, you're, you're ending a, a cycle of spiritual growth. Um, not that it's completing. It's that, you know, you've done your spiritual growth in a particular chapter on a particular issue. Um, your set of learning is coming to a completion. And as that's ending, your soul is getting room to stretch a little more fully. And from that more fully stretching place, um, you'll make room for a new set of learning to begin. I feel like at the beginning of the new year, um, you'll be started on a new journey. Um, and that really connects to um, how are you going to step into this next part as Rob? Are you going to be able to... Um, hold your true self, your authentic self? Um, or are you going to worry about what others might think of you um, and have that shift and change how you project who you truly are? So that there's that, that you're starting to get to know you. And then the challenge is how do you carry that you forward, um, regardless of what other people think and how they respond to you? Um, so that sounds very cool. That sounds like a great new year for you. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, all right, Kimberly. Um, you have the nine of angels. And so this is a reminder that your guardian angel is always around you. I know you work with the angels quite a bit. Um, are you calling on them? Or are you asking them to guide you, to hold you, to protect you? Um, 
So the nine of angels um, has a little bit of sadness attached to it, a little bit of sorrow, and that's okay um, because sometimes the holidays bring out some energy of that we're ready to release. Um, so call on your angels to be with you, to walk with you, to guide you, um, and specifically your guardian angel. Because um, remember when your guardian angel walks with you, they can wrap their wings around you provide you with support and comfort if you need it. Um, and it's a reminder that you're not alone. Um, that is, that's one of the, the one things that will disconnect us from our divine energy the most is when we feel like we're all alone um, and we're really surrounded. And we also have a lot of people, you know, that we could connect to if we would let them know um, that we want to connect. Um, so make sure you do that as well during the, the, this week in particular. All right. Okay. Bobby. Hello. Happy Turkey day. <laughs> so your card is the queen of trees and the queen of trees. She's a big nurturer shock that you would get this for the holiday for Thanksgiving. Right. Um, so this week is all about your energy is going to be about nurturing, um, nurturing others, caretaking others, um, making space for them to feel seen and heard. Um, but make sure that you're also allowing space for you to be nurtured as well. Um, you know, somebody asks if you want a hand, um, say yes, please. Um, <laughs> you know, we often are like, no, fine, I got it. No, fine, I got it. And then the next thing we know, we're we're feeling stressed out or overburdened. Oh, it's definitely a third <coughs> third eye clearing <laughs> coming through. So open your perception into how can you receive help. So it's great to take care of others, but also if they want to help take care of you, let them. Um, you know, there's always something that somebody can do to help if they they want to be in service as well. Because remember, that's empowering them as well as empowering you. So uh, be the queen of nurturing uh, this week. Um, but again, allow other people to help too. All right. Uh, Jerry, hello. Nice card. So this is the ace of trees for you, my dear. That's the abundance card. Woohoo! Um, so the aces are all, I see them as um, like you're being handed a gift from the divine. And abundance um, has a lot of different meanings to different people. Um, so sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's abundance of um, family and connections. Sometimes it's an abundance of joy and happiness, but it's always heart filled. So um, as you receive this the gift of abundance. Remember to take a moment to be thankful um, and to express your gratitude. Um, that's been coming up with my spiritual team um, for about a week now, for sure. Um, how many ways can you allow happiness to come in? Um, and you can allow even more when we are able to be grateful. Um, so whenever something pops in and you know it's you know coming from the divine or it feels divine, like it's in divine timing. Um, remember just to say thank you in the more moment um, because then the divine energy and our spiritual team will send us even more. The more we say thank you, the more we receive. How cool is that? All right, have fun with your abundance. All right, Dinah. Ooh, nice card for you. This is a soul card. This is also toward the end of the soul cards. This is the universe card. And this is all about expansion. Woo! Um, so the soul card is really for you for the rest of the year. And that's saying that, you know, you are starting to get comfy with who you are at the moment. You're expanding more fully into who you are. Um, when people come in and you are tempted to collapse your energy, just take a deep breath and, and decide if you are going to allow them to control your happiness, to control who you are. Um, and often if we have just that breath of awareness, um, then we will choose to stand in our own power. So this is really about um, 
you're really fully coming into yourself. You're really fully coming into um, how you feel um, and how you want to be um, perceived by others, but mostly by yourself. So the universe is supporting you. It's loving you and inviting you to expand because there is no limit to who you can be and how you can be. Nice. Love that for you. All right. And nice. So this one, happy Thanksgiving to you too, sweetie. This one is the King of Angels. And the King of Angels is a peaceful warrior. Um, and so what that feels like for me for this week is that, you know, you have just such a gentle spirit, um, but you're also very good at being an advocate for others. Um, so the peaceful warrior is able to be the voice for others who aren't able to use theirs. You know, sometimes we're an advocate for children or we're an advocate for the environment or advocate for animals um, or even for other people who just have difficulty speaking their needs. Um, and the peaceful warrior helps them do that. It's not that we take over for them, but we can see when they need their voice heard and we don't judge them if they can't do it themselves, but we, we help support them by speaking um, the truth that needs to be spoken for them. Um, so I'm feeling that for you. Um, and with that be falling into Thanksgiving week, you know, maybe it's somebody who needs you to um, support them in, you know, family can be a little difficult, <laughs> you know, and um, sometimes, you know, family knows exactly what buttons to push. Um, and so maybe you stand up for somebody whose button is getting pushed by saying to the button pusher, um, how about you cut that out? You know, let's have some joy and love. Um, and, and we don't need to pick on each other this, this holiday. <laughs> um, you'll see it, you'll feel it, you'll know it. Use your voice as an advocate, uh, which you're wonderful at. Have a nice holiday. All right, Joanne, let me move that. So Joanne, you have the five of angels. And those fives are sometimes a little difficult because they're the center of each of the card deck. So they're like neither good nor bad. They're kind of in the middle. The, the five of angels is, um, it's, it, it says withdrawal. Um, which could be quite literal, like maybe you don't need as much caffeine or sugar as <laughs> um, you've been having. Maybe you need to cut back um, and go through a little withdrawal on that. But it also often means that, you know, sometimes we need to go inward. Um, we get overstimulated by our environment. Our nervous system gets out of whack really easy. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. And maybe that is just a little bit too much for you right now. So pay attention if your body needs a timeout. Pay attention if you need to like take a nap or pull yourself out of a situation um, and go lay down. Um, because, you know, when we need to withdraw and we don't and we push, push through and do, 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 we often compromise our immune system. Um, and that's why we get so sick at the holidays because we, we create so much more doing than we do in the regular year. And we put all this pressure on ourselves to get all this stuff done. Um, and it's almost impossible to do everything that we, we create um, for ourselves. And so listen to your body really closely when it needs a break, give it a break because you don't want to be forced into a break with illness. Okay. And that's true for everybody listening. We all do that. Um, so everybody can use that message. So thank you, Joanne, for bringing it to us. Huh? Oh, I missed Angie. I'm so sorry. Skipped over you. Hi, Angie. Um, you are the seven of trees. And the seven of trees is all about contemplation. Sound familiar? <laughs> so 
So the contemplation comes as, you know, you've done a lot, um, up, you know, the year is coming to a close. So sometimes, you know, the decade is coming to a close, really. So sometimes to get a little perspective, it's good to kind of do a year in review, like, and not in the negative sense, but in the what have I accomplished in the last year, in the last 10 years, right? Because we're going to step into a new decade. Um, we can use a larger frame of reference if we want. And so in the contemplation, it's like, are you headed in the direction you want to be? That's the big thing that I'm hearing is which way are you driving your car? Um, are you driving it toward your goal or what you wish or want to create? Or are you letting somebody else drive your car right now? Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, are you pleasing other people and not um, paying attention to what Angie needs and what Angie wants. Um, and so use some time to really look at that, give yourself space to look at that. Um, there's no shaming, there's no blaming. Um, it's just an awareness, a noticing. Um, and when we notice things, then we have an opportunity to change them. We have an opportunity to recreate or create in a new direction. Um, and I love the analogy of who's driving your car. Um, because there have been so many times where when you're people pleasing, you let somebody else drive the car because they're getting what they want and you're not even like in control of your life and what's happening. So look at that and contemplate and then decide, is that who you want to be or how you want to be in 2020? Who knows? <laughs> All right, my dear. All right, I think it's Adrian. Oh my gosh, Adrian, you haven't been here in a while. Happy Thanksgiving. Nice to see you. Ah, so no wonder they're going to give you a card that's for your soul. So the teacher card is coming up for you. And the teacher card, um, as part of your soul's lesson, as part of your soul's journey, is a twofold lesson. Um, one, um, we've gotten to a point in our lives where it's time for us to show others the way. Um, and part of that happens as we become clear, like you've gone through a lot, you've mastered a lot, and there are people who could use your expertise. So becoming the teacher for those who um, are on their journey um, at a newer point where you can offer some assistance, some guidance. Um, that's part one. Part two, when we step into the teacher energy, um, it often means we're also ready for to receive new teaching. So it's time for a new mentor. It's time for a new teacher. It's time for a new guide. Um, it's time to level up is what I'm hearing. Um, so as part of the leveling up, um, it's the energy of you know, we get real comfortable staying in our, our own little cocoon. Um, and we're meant to stretch and grow and expand. Um, and when we get comfortable, it usually means it's time for us to learn something new or to expand our gifts or to expand our wisdom. So, um, cause the best teachers continue their education. They continue to learn because um, really you only need to be one step in front of your students. You only know, need to know a little bit more than they do about this particular subject um, and then continue to learn so that you have a continued flow of information that you can share. Um, so sounds good. Step into that teacher role um, and look for your new teacher in the new year. Sounds good. Oh my goodness, Barbie, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ah, no wonder. <laughs> you got the beginning card, which is the beginning of a soul's journey, a beginning of a new year for you. Um, the beginning card is about sort of an initiation. It's like time for you to start fresh, time for you to, you've completed a lot of things. Um, that needed completing and it's time to start again. Um, not in a repeat because I did it badly, but because it's time to learn a new lesson. So what is the lesson going to be? Doesn't matter, but who are you going to be in that place? 
So when the beginning card comes in, it's inviting you to be open, to be curious, and to really allow the divine energy to guide you, however you connect to that. So whether you call on your angels, your guides, you talk to God or goddess, whatever moves you forward um, in your soul's growth, um, remember to call the divine energy in to help you um, but be magical, curious, wide awake, open um, to some new things coming your way. Um, new beginnings is a really great way to end out a year and to move into the next. Love that for you and have a wonderful birthday. All right, Carol, I'm going to draw for you first. Um, so your card first is the two of trees. And notice the eye of Horus, the Ankh, and the sun. So what this is reminding you is it's to really be in balance is to be able to be flexible. Um, when we get kind of rigid, like it has to be done this way, it can only be done this way, um, we're restricting our energy flow. So the more we can kind of move with the flow, allow things to happen how they're going to happen, the more happy we are, the more open we are, um, and the more we can allow in new possibilities. Um, the magic can't come in if we don't allow it, right? So give some space to being flexible. Um, <laughs> and what I'm seeing is, you know, flexible about time, flexible about... Um, plans, flexible about um, somebody else's choices, whatever it needs to be. Um, it's a great way to go into the holiday weekend. Um, being open, being flexible, just being like, hey, I'm showing up and I'm going to have a good time and I'm going to be joyful. That's my goal for the whole weekend um, is just to be filled with joy. And how do I do that? Maybe I've got to be a little flexible. Um, so I invite you to try that. All right. And for Dick, let's see, Dick, what, what's your card? Oh, interesting. You both got twos. <laughs> hmm. um, so you got the two of stars. Fine, sir. And so the two of stars is, um, in this deck, it's about being bold. Um, really going for it. Um, and so when I see that, when I feel that, it's it's about knowing that it's okay to speak your truth, knowing that it's okay for you to say what you want, say what you need. Other people are going to hear it um, and receive it. And so when we do that, then our relationships are stronger. Our energy is stronger. We are more connected to ourself and to source. Um, and so, you know, that's when we're considered bold, usually we're being very much who we are. Um, and so people are surprised when we're, when we're truly ourselves, our authentic selves. So I encourage you to do that um, because it's really going to bring you balance. And, and you and Carol both have cards that are all, twos are all about balance. So you're both very stable, both very balanced. So um, it'll be a good, good time for both of you. You seem, it seems like you'll both be very grounded. Need that. <laughs> All right, Lynn. Hi, dear. Happy to have you here on the show. So you have the eight of angels, which is a little difficult because it can be about confusion. And what I feel about that is um, be prepared for some mixed messages. Um, people say one thing and do another, and it's like, wait a minute, you said this. Um, or people are saying something and their energy doesn't match it. Um, trust your intuition. Listen to your heart because that's where you will be most grounded and um, it'll keep you from spinning. Um, the, the thing that I'm feeling most for you is that, um, there are certain people who know how to get you, your head spinning. <laughs> um, and, but you can choose not to allow that. 
So to do that, you want to stay grounded. You want to check into your heart, check into your gut, um, see what your truth button says, <laughs> and um, be open to the possibility that people don't always say what they mean or mean what they say. Hmm. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so when, when you experience that, you know, trust your gut, not the words, because the words don't always match. All right. We've all experienced that. All right, Martina. You have another one of the aces. This is the ace of hearts. So the ace of hearts is the love card. So the divine energy is giving you sort of this little gift of love, um, which is great for this weekend and for the week coming up. Um, because it's inviting you to be in that love space, in that heart space. And that is really um, a lovely place for us to be um, in the holidays as we're connecting with others. It's like we can be filled with that gratitude. We can be filled with love. Um, and there's going to be lots of little gifts of love along the way, which is really sweet. I feel like you're going to have these little breadcrumbs that you're your angels are leaving for you that are filled with love. Um, so pick those up and put them in your heart um, and let them keep you going and guiding you forward. Yay. Love that for you this week. All right, Tony. You have the four of stars. Oh, Tina, not Tony. Sorry. All right, four of stars, my dear. So the four of stars is the advancement card. Um, are you in a space where you might be ready for a promotion? Because <laughs> um, that's often what this card is about. Um, or given more responsibilities or, or actually seen for um, your worth. Um, it can be, you know, your, your boss noticing you and saying you're doing a good job. Um, but a lot of this is about you moving forward, um, moving forward in your career, moving forward in um, your life. It can also be a spiritual upgrade. Um, so spiritual upgrades, when they happen, um, they, they can be a little bit rocky, but it's definitely um, this ability to move forward vibrationally. But it really feels connected in the physical realm more than the spiritual realm. So it feels like you're moving forward on a project, on a job, um, on something. And um, I'm seeing toasting glasses. So um, that seems really cool to me. So um, look forward to that and see um, how that um, shakes out for you. Um, but it'll be in the next week or so. So enjoy. <laughs> All right. Um, Andrew. Mm, another one of the soul cards. So this one is the Empress card. And the Empress card is the is the the mother card. And the mother card in this regard is um the Empress is a leader and she leads with the divine feminine. Um so your soul is being called to lead with the divine feminine right now. And the difficulty with that, especially being male, is that the divine feminine is very much a nurturer, um, very much a caretaker of those around, but she leads fully. <laughs> um, an empress does not take any baloney for sure. Um, it's not just the straight mother card. It's the um, that royal energy of being in charge but being um, in tune to your intuition, in tune to your feelings, allowing that energy to guide you, move you forward. Um, and this is for you through the end of the year. So it's about you holding your leadership role in a soft way, um, but also a very deliberate, strong way at the same time. Um, so check in and see how that um, resonates for you. And as things unfold over the next few weeks, 
Um, remember that as you stand in your leadership role, um, think about how you can do it from that loving, gentle place, um, as opposed to the rigid, it can only be done in that place. Um, cause then people will respond to your caretaking and your caring, um, by standing there for you and with you as you lead. Hmm, nice. All right, Mary, of course. Um, so your card, dear, is the two of hearts. Interesting, we've had three of the twos already. So the two of hearts is, is two people coming together in union. Um, sometimes that is seen as the lover's card. Um, Sometimes it is the simply the two people coming together um, in a relationship with work or with friendship, but it's a really coming together of two, two like minds, two like hearts. It's a deeper connection. When you see union, it's, it's the, the merging of energy and a lot of co-creation. Um, so whether that's in a relationship for you that has to do um, with love or with finances or with um, a new enterprise, um, for the next week, that gathering together as one is going to be really important to you. Um, and that also makes sense over the holiday season that um, you may have those times where you're you know, like-minded hearts are coming together, often family coming together, but it's a harmonious union. So that's a lovely thing to see. And so um, embrace that and keep your heart open because the more your heart is open, the more you will attract open-heartedness. All right, love that for you. All right, Janet, happy Thanksgiving, my dear. Um, so your card is another one of the soul cards. It's the force card, which is all about strength. So your lesson right now is how do you call on your inner fortitude? How do you call on your inner strength? It's part of your soul's journey right now. And, and it's how, how do we stand as ourselves? Um, and when we do that, our strength radiates out. And people feel the force around us. It's not forceful because that's bully energy, but it's standing in our power, standing in our strength and being a force to be reckoned with, <laughs> right? Um, we're not going to be a pushover energetically. And so um, this period of time, the next month or two, um, you are going to have some tests of people pushing your buttons um, and trying to deplete your strength. Take a deep breath and know that it's just a test and that you don't have to allow that to happen. Really stand in that place of your personal power, um, which you've been getting really good at, and um, tap into that because that will get you through um, any challenges that come up because all the challenges that are coming up are testing you on your soul and... Um, how that, how that's un, unfolding, <laughs> how it's developing, how it's evolving. I guess that's the right way to say it. Um, so stand in your strength. You have all the power, call on your angels. Cause that's also got the angel wings with you because the angels have your back. All right, Teresa. Of course. So you have the king of hearts who is the healer. And, you know, the king of hearts, um, he's a different healer than the queen, right? So the king of hearts is very much about, um, again, standing in the ability to feel all the emotions fully um, and then use that intuitive guideline to heal themselves and others. And when we are women and we, we pull the, the male cards, it's, it's reminding us to, to stand in that strength, call in the divine masculine to hold your energy and help you. Um, 
It also may mean that there is a male um, who has a very strong healing ability who is going to um, be near you, around you, connected to you in, the, in this week. And so open yourself to allowing that to happen. Um, sometimes um, we don't receive help <laughs> very easily. Um, so allow that to happen. Um, you know, you could always get a, a massage or something and you might have the king of hearts as your masseuse, right? Or your massage therapist. So who knows? But it's really calling on that energy of um, using your intuition, guiding yourself through your emotions, standing in your power in a way where you're tapped into all of that, um, but it's unwavering. That's the big thing for you. All right. Thank you, dear. Um, so Jacqueline, happy Thanksgiving Eve to you too. Um, so your card is another one of the soul cards. Got a lot of these tonight. Um, yours is the path and the path is inviting exploration. So right now, um, you are in a space where your soul is being guided down a new path. Um, you're being guided in a new way being guided in a, yeah, mostly guided in a new way. Um, I'm not feeling multiple paths to choose from. I think that happened a little while ago. Um, but right now you're on the path. Um, and remember, there's no wrong path. When we're on our spiritual journey, all paths will lead us to what we need to learn in any moment. There's no right or there's no wrong. So in this place, it's really, ex it, it's extending to you the opportunity to really explore some new ways to be Jacqueline. And there's new ways for you to fully live out loud as Jacqueline. So um, be open and curious to the things that are popping up for you um, to explore. Maybe some new classes, new relationships, um, maybe some new um, books to read, whatever it is that, that is calling your attention. Um, that curious part of you is ready to dive into some new things, try some new things, try new food, try new clothes, whatever it is. Um, but allow yourself space to move out of the ordinary so that you can move more fully into the extraordinary um, life that you are meant to live. Mm, love that for all of us. Enjoy that, Jacqueline. All right. Uh, Teresa. Hi, dearest. Um, hmm, here's the lover's card again, a slightly different one. This one's on the soul level. I don't know if you have a lover. <laughs> Um, but again, the lover's card is about union and coming together. So the union card in this version um, is on the soul level. It's not just this week coming together in harmony. It's you coming together in harmony, in union with someone else on a very deep connected level. Now, whether that is connected through business or a personal relationship or a friendship, um, all of the cards would look the same. All of the energy would look the same, but it's really that one mind, one heart kind of connection. Um, it's the single pointed focus of intention and attention that gathers the energy together. And as you step into this energy, this lover type of energy, it's inviting you to remember that, um, when you come together as one, you still are one independently. So we don't want to lose ourselves in the relationship. We want to bring ourselves fully in relationship with someone else fully so that you enhance each other. You don't collapse each other. Um, that is part of the, um, the difficulty. And when that happens, just notice if you are tempted to um, try to make them happy or try to please them or that they're doing that with you because that's a sure signal um, 
that you're not coming in in your full energy, in your full integrity, in the full scope of who you are as a being. So um, that's the challenge as we go through this. And the soul cards, again, are going to be for a few months, at least into the new year. Okay, so pay attention. All right. <clears throat> Sandy, I'm going to grab a drink. Hi, dearest. Sandy was one of the brave souls who came and took class with Ed and I this weekend. <laughs> ah, so the four of hearts card, the depression card doesn't mean it's the depression. <laughs> so lots of times at the holiday, we feel that heavy heart because we're, we're missing people who are here before, or, um, you know, the tradition isn't the same. And so we feel badly about that. So, it's, it's a heavy heart energy. Um, and make sure, first of all, that it's all yours. You're very empathic. So it's very easy to pick up other sadness and not even realize that it's not yours. So when we gather together, you know, other people may be going through a grieving process or they may be missing someone or their feelings might have gotten hurt by someone else. And it causes that heaviness of heart. But just because someone else feels that doesn't mean you have to take that on for them. Um, and if you're feeling it, then allow yourself space to have it. Um, we're allowed to be sad. You know, we don't have to be happy in every single minute. But you can choose whether you want to wallow in sadness or if you want to call in your own love and happiness. And I'm going to remind you of um, the, the gratitude practice of, of writing down things that you're grateful for. And if you're having difficulty with a particular person, then write five wonderful things about that person so that you shift the energy of your connection with that person and you are not dragged down um, vibrationally with them if they're not having a good day. If they come in and they're cranky and sad and that you just want to get cranky and sad with them, then, you know, take a time out, go to the bathroom and list five positive things about them so that you can move back into your heart energy um, and also release their energy from yours. Okay. Another one for all of us. Thank you, Sandy. All right, Karen, welcome to the show. Um, so you have the three of angels. And so the three of angels is calling for some clarification. So all that means is that um, don't make any decisions based on assumptions. <laughs> um, that's what I'm hearing. Um, so what that means basically is that you may not have all the information that you need to make a clear decision. And there is no weakness in saying, um, could you explain that more um, to me or... Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, and, you know, sometimes people aren't thrilled <laughs> that we don't magically understand everything that they're saying in the moment. But this is inviting you to, to own that it's not weakness not to know what they're talking about or not to understand clearly what they're saying because the clarification will be important for you to step fully into um, your own, the way I'm seeing it is for you to step into your own energy, you need to have a clear understanding of what's going on around you. And some things aren't quite as they appear. So again, I'm going to invite you to check into your heart, check into your intuition. If things don't match, if the words and the, the vibration don't match, then ask for some clarity. Um, and it's okay to say, I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Um, could you explain it better? Because um, people enjoy talking. So usually it's not a big deal. All right. Have a nice holiday, dear. Okay. Mary Archer. All right. So you have the five of stars. And again, the five, the fives are interesting because they're in the middle. And so they, they're neither good nor bad. 
Um, but the five of stars in particular is inviting in diversity. Um, so what that means um, to me often is that, you know, we get stuck in a rut and we do things the same old way every time. So sometimes we just need change. We need to take a different uh, way to work. We need to um, invite different people over to come play games. Um, we need to watch different shows or listen to more than one, you know, newscaster. Um, Cause sometimes we get a biased opinion, right? If we only listen to one thing. And so getting um, multiple opinions um, is really important because then we can use all of that information to check in with ourselves and find our own truth. But if we only have one source or two sources of information, we not, may not be getting what we need. Um, so this is inviting a lot of diversity um, to come in. And I, I can see it, I'm seeing flashes of it, diversity of people, diversity of ideas, diversity of food, diversity of um, circumstances. There, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways where this is going to kind of play out for you um, in the next week. So be open to trying new things, um, be open to change, um, and be open to um, multiple thoughts and ideas on a particular subject because we don't all believe the same thing. <laughs> all right. Um, Genevieve. All right, Genevieve, you have the Knight of Trees. And the Knight of Trees is really, he holds the custodian energy. And the custodian energy is um, like the guardian of the forest. And the forest in the tarot deck is basically our family, our tribe, our friends. Um, and the, the, the Knight is very... This is the one night that is very grounded. A lot of the night energy is very impulsive, right? They're off and running without thinking things through. But the night of trees is very, um, very much an advocate, especially for family, especially for um, the environment and children and pets, those who are, are, less fortunate or who do not have their a full enough voice of their own. So as you are in this week, as in the custodian energy, just remember, think of it as you're the caretaker for the family, but in the, the space of you're the voice for those who have difficulty using their voice. Um, and at Thanksgiving, that can be an issue. There may be some people who are shy, um, who are unable to speak up. Or maybe there are people who are a little um, overwhelming um, and they need to make space for some other people to be seen and heard. I hope that makes sense. Um, so stand in that guardian role as the custodian of your family. And um, it's a lovely place to be because you can, you can help be the voice for people who need their voice to be heard. All right. Christina, happy Thanksgiving. Of course, it's not too late. Um, so you have the king of stars this week, which is all about alchemy, which is nice. So the, the king of stars for you is all about um, really tapping into your transformational work, um, really being and calling on the magic. The alchemists can change um the boring into the non-boring. So as you gather together for the holiday, think about the fact that you it doesn't have to be the way it's always been. You can call in the magic, you can transform it. Um, you can really shift who you are in the moment. And it's calling in the king energy, which is asking you to be a leader um, in a very strong masculine way not in a soft feminine way and not that that's a bad thing. It's just reminding you that sometimes, um, you know, kings have to match kings, right? 
Um, and a king has more energy than a queen um, in certain things. And so the king of stars is really about being the, the leader and the guide into change and, and being an agent of change. Um, and in this next week, you know, really being the voice of change and the energy of change and doing it from an active place, not a reactive place. And you know what I mean by that. So make sure you really connect into your heart, expand it and use it to guide you. Um, and when you feel like you're getting called into the reaction, remember to pull your hand on your heart, take a deep breath and blow out anything that isn't yours. And then listen to what your soul's trying to say. All right. Um, Jackie, your card. Here's another night, <laughs> the night of stars. Now this night is a little more adventurous. <laughs> so the night of stars is really about like getting out there and trying new things. Um, and what it's saying for this week is like, um, think of this week as being a week of saying yes, yes to new things, yes to new experiences. Um, release any of the, the doubt um, and the worry and, and think of life as an adventure. And um, if we always stay home, how are we ever going to learn something new, explore something different? So your knee jerk reaction might be to say no, but try to take a deep breath whenever you feel like you want to say no and see if yes is really the right answer. Um, because it's time for you to expand who you are and try new things. Um, so give it a shot, get out there and have fun. Um, go play and have, and do some different things. Cause that's, what's, what's calling you forward. All right. Um, let's see. Ah, Marie, <laughs> I'm going to draw yours first. So yours is the retreat. This is a soul card and the retreat is part another card that's about um, the, your soul right now is going through this period where um, it's going through a lot of change. <laughs> um, and in that place of a lot of change, you know, you might need to um, have some time for some quiet and some contemplation. Um, sometimes you go to a retreat for that. Sometimes you take a weekend at the spa for that. Um, sometimes you just hole up in your, um, in your house when nobody else is there and you just give yourself some space. Um, retreat is when we pull our energy out of the overstimulation that we can get from everyone around us, their expectations, what they want from us. Um, and we just say, no, this is, this is what I need. This is what I want. Um, so just know that your soul is, as your soul is going through what it's going through right now and your journey, you're going through your journey the way you are, that you're going to have these moments where you're going to need some solitude. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's not an isolation thing. It's a healing thing. Um, cause sometimes we just need to reconnect with who we are, reconnect with our divine spark and let it fully shine. And sometimes we can't do that. Um, with other people, too many other people around. All right. Now, Bella, welcome to the show, Bella. All right. So Bella, your card is the five of trees. This is the third five we've had. So this five, these fives are tricky because they're right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the deck. And so this card can be about limitations and that's hard because you know, it's, it's hard when we're limited to what we can do or how we can be, or we have to follow other people's rules or guidelines and it can feel a little confining. So know that, that that's the energy for this week where 
things may feel a little uncomfortable because you're not being allowed to stretch fully into what you want and how you want it to be. Um, but how do you live your spirit in the limitations you're being given? Um, cause you know, we all have times where we, you know, we have to do certain things at a certain time and, um, we have to do things we don't want to do, or we do want to do. And, and so we're kind of caught in this ball of, um, we don't have a lot of room for our own choices. Um, so in that place, you can always choose to be Bella, no matter how limiting the energy or the environment is around you. You get to choose you. You get to choose your happiness. Um, don't let anybody else um, create that for you. You get to. And when you do that, really just check in and see what will make you happy. And sometimes, you know, it's hard within the limitations we're at, but we just choose the best, um, most happy thing we can do in the moment. That makes sense? So have a beautiful Thanksgiving, you guys. Um, wishing you the best. All right. And Emily. All right. I'll do yours first, Emily, and then your mom's. So Emily, your card is the seven of angels. Nice card. Because the seven of angels is, is letting you know that you're making progress. <laughs> and this week you'll be making gentle progress. Um, and it's like, I can feel the treadmill of life that you've been on. <laughs> and so it feels like you're going and going and going and not getting anywhere. But this week you'll finally feel that breakthrough energy that, okay, finally things are moving forward. It's, I'm not stuck in neutral. I'm able to move forward. And so you're being blessed with the energy that, um, okay, now you get to move forward. Now you get to um, get some traction. And now you get to really feel that sense of I'm not stuck anymore. Um, I'm finally going somewhere. <laughs> um, it does feel like it may be slower than you want. Um, but that's okay. Because remember, you know, if the treadmill stops abruptly, right, you, you go head over tea kettle, right? So you got to take your time, you got to step off and you've got to get going and then you can start to, to walk and then run. Um, so the, the stuckness is, is, is stopping um, and you're starting to move forward and the speed will increase the more you allow happiness to be the, the fuel um, for your journey. All right. And for your mom, Jackie, Another angel, huh? So you got the queen of angels, Jackie. And she's all about being the visionary. The queen of angels really uses her, her heart to create um, new ideas and new things. Uh, visionary energy is very much um, about seeing what could be. Um, and when the queen of hearts does it, she's doing it from a place of love and she's doing it from a place of joy. So it's like you are in a place in this next week where you're allowing joy and love to create all sorts of wonderful things. Um, you have some beautiful ideas that you would like to have unfold. Um, stay connected to your heart. Um, and that is what will happen. Um, and remember that you radiate love for your entire family. Um, and they feel that they sense that they know that from you. Um, and it allows them to be open to more possibilities as well. Um, you're like the guiding heart light for the family. Um, and you remind them how to be in love in their own self, um, which is a beautiful gift to share with them. So have a wonderful holiday. Um, together. All right. Margaret. Okay, Margaret, <laughs> the 10 of hearts. So this is it. <laughs> this is, this is, we're done card. And that can be a good thing. The 10 of hearts is like the end. 
Uh, there's no more. Um, so whatever has been going on that you've been striving and working for and getting ready and all of this stuff, it's done. It's over. And maybe it's just been preparing for Thanksgiving, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow's the day, you know, no more preparation time. It's it, the show is going to go on with or without us. Right. But, um, focus on the positive things about that as emotional beings, we can sometimes go into overwhelm and, you know, the tears will flow because um, there's that release of finally it's done. <laughs> um, and even though it's joyful, it also can be sad at the same moment. So make sure that you're letting your emotions flow through this whole thing. So even though it's coming to an end, um, it's making room for a new beginning. Um, and, you know, we can just let our emotions guide us, let the intuition flow um, and focus on the positive um, aspects of things ending. Um, because, you know, a job well done is really fun. And when something's done and we can start focusing on the next thing or the, um, make space for new things to happen, that's beautiful too. So focus on the, the, the sun of it rather than the decline. Uh, and you'll be in a great space, sweetie. Enjoy that. All right, Cindy Lynn. Yes, the internet's been spotty for a couple people. So I know you will listen when you get to. You'll hear it when you're meant to. How's that? So your card, my dear, and this is perfect for you, is the nine of cards. And this is the perseverance card. So even without the internet working, you are going to persevere. You are going to get your message. You are going to be heard and be seen and heard. Um, and that's, that's what's going on for you in this next week is that, you know, things may get wonky. Things may not be exactly how you would like them to be, but you're going to get through it and you are going to persevere. There's, there's no one who can take you down <laughs> energetically you have the ability, the power, and the heart to, to stand up to whatever life is going to throw at you. Um, and it's more, I feel more like it's glitchy, like um, glitchy things going on for you. Um, it feels like Mercury retrograde, even though we're not in Mercury retrograde. So um, I'm not surprised about the internet not working. I could see like the timer on the oven not working, things like that. Um, so just be mindful that, um, you know, have a good sense of humor <laughs> as things uh, may be a little glitchy around you, but you are going to get through it and laugh your way through um, because that's the only thing that we can do and it keeps us in our joy. Um, and it gives us stories to tell later when, when all of that stuff happens. So you have a blessed uh, Thanksgiving and we'll see you next time. All right, April, you have the three of stars, my dear. So when the three stars to come together, this is often an indication of um, visions coming in, aha moments. Um, pay attention to your dreams. Make sure you're um, writing down anything that you remember. Um, don't be surprised if you have flashes of inspiration. Um, if you're somebody who um, channels, then this also may be a time of channeling for you, channel writing. Um, automatic writing would be great for you because it's, it will allow the connection to expand and open. Um, but it's a really open time for your crown chakra and your third eye um, to come together. So, um, you know, one of the things you can also do is to... Um, allow the creativity to flow. Sometimes if we do things like we um, do a brain dump or we sort of write down everything that our brain is think thinking about. And then as we do that, we make space for um, creative thought to come through. Um, that may happen for you because um, this is very connected to your creativity. But again, really the, I'm feeling a lot of the, the third eye and the crown connected in a in an expansive way for you. So it's making this funnel of um, divine inspiration so it can come in and connect to you and through you. 
So hang on for the next week or so, dear. All right, Kimberly, welcome to you, to the show, my dear. So you have the page of stars. Look at that beautiful kitty underneath. So the page of stars really is that energy of going through your life in this next week and from that curious place. You know, I think of my cats as like the scientists, right? You know, they're they're knocking things off to see how they fall and and they're they're trying to get in boxes that are maybe too small for their body, right? Because they're just trying to see how things work. Um, so approach your week this week in that fashion. Um, how can you do things differently? Um, how can you um expand what you do. And in that curious place, you know, I think of you um, sitting and writing and, and in the writing, you're, you're asking your spiritual team questions. You know, how can I do this in a brand new way? And then leaving space for them to answer you because um, you have that capacity and just you know, is there a different way to do this? Is there a different way for me to approach my um, spiritual calling? Is there a different way for me to do my physical job? Um, and ask some questions that resonate with you um, and allow space for your team to communicate back and forth with you about that. Because um, I really feel like that curiosity is going to spark some new creation for you. Um, so it while you have the energy um, aligned for this week because um, we don't always have that. So use it while you got it. All right. Have a nice week. All right, Deborah. Nice, dear. Yours is the page of angels. And the page of angels is connected to mysticism. So the two pages in a row, interesting. So the page is also... Um, in the mysticism energy, it's inviting you in this next week to really look at the mystical way um, you live your life. So how do you call in the magic? How do you connect to the divine? Um, do you connect to your angels? Do you connect to your the animals or nature? And, and how do you feel that spark? because we all connect to the mysteries of life in our own unique way, and you have the Deborah way. And so how can you connect to that energy this week? How can you allow it to flourish within you? Um, because your angels are right there to um, connect with you and to guide you as you explore that energy. Um, and again, it's a short window of time, so I invite you to take the opportunity to do that um, because, um, you know, those doors of opportunity sometimes only opens every so often. Um, so take a shot on it. Uh, see how you connect with the divine um, and allow it to awaken more fully inside of you. All right. And now the last card for Neshi. So Neshi's card is the Knight of Angels. And this is the Watcher card. And that's what she does as my producer, right? <laughs> she watches to make sure everything goes on. So again, the Knight can be a little bit um, spontaneous. Um, and as the Watcher, the Knight is paying attention to what's going on and analyzing. So I'm seeing a lot of looking at how things are working, analyzing um, what's what could be done better and how, how, um, how you would like things to evolve. Um, and so give yourself some space for doing that, being the observer, um, and actually being kind of like the scientist. Um, cause I see you taking notes on, you know, this is working, this isn't working. Um, and, um, and maybe even watching other things, to see how you could improve or do things differently. Um, so there's a little bit of that watch energy, um, but the night is very brave and curious and goes for it, which sounds just like you. Um, so with that guys, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and a wonderful holiday weekend. 
Um, we here at Star Nations really uh, are thankful and grateful for you and everyone in our spiritual community who gathers together here to heal, to learn, and to grow. And with that, have a beautiful mwah, rest of your weekend, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.